saying, run. That is a command which says, whatever has arrived in memory, do it. Do this collection of instructions called a program. Now, we've stopped the program to show Boyle's law, but we could do it again. We could say, run, and since the program is still in memory, just because it stopped doesn't mean it's gone away. If I press run and do it again, as I did with the cassette tape program, do you remember Roots? The program will run again, and we'll get the same titling back. Now, apart from the programs that you can get commercially, you can also get programs in this form, on disc, on cassette tape, from other sources, from clubs and from friends and from users. Many programs are generally available, are public domain. You won't have any problem getting them, but there are other sources you can go to if you want programs. For example, there are many books containing programs. If we pick up books here, we'll find that there are all sorts of programs for doing various things typed into the computer and we could type in these program instructions and the program would run. Similarly, even the Commodore 64 user's guide, the one that comes packed in the box, contains programs that we may type into the computer and gives us examples of how we can make certain things happen. Let's see if we can find one here. Here's a program, for example, down this one. If we type in these instructions, then, and say run, we'll have a program in our computer. In fact, we have plenty of books of this sort, and we also have many magazines, some are published monthly, some not quite so often, which contain many, many programs of various things. All of these magazines are published with plenty of programs, and we can take these various magazines, put in the programs, and eventually we'll have a running program by typing these in. Now, one thing I'd like to point out to you, however, is these programs are pretty big. If you take a program like this one, for example, which is for the 64, it starts on this page and then continues through all of these pages through. You can see that's a lot of typing. Now, it's probably a very good game program, so you'll probably have quite a good time playing the game once you've typed it all in. But typing in that huge amount of material means a couple of problems. First of all, a lot of rather careful work. And secondly, possibly a couple of mistakes that you'll have to look for and correct if the program doesn't run correctly. Now that's okay, it's a good game, you spend a lot of time, you type it in, you run it, you say, what a wonderful game. But if you shut the computer off, the program's gone. There's nothing left. And the next time you turn your computer on, the next day or the next week or whatever, and you want to do that program again, guess what? You'd have to type it all in again. Well, you don't have to. There's a way, once you have typed or entered a program into the computer, and once it's ready and running reasonably well, you can then copy it onto cassette tape or onto floppy disk and then bring the program back anytime you want to. We call that copying save. In other words, we can tell the computer once a program is ready, save that program onto cassette tape, save that program onto floppy disk, and the program will be there, and we'll, then we won't have to type it in the next time. We can just call it up from where we have placed it in storage. Now, there's one other way you can get a program apart from buying it, getting it on disc or tape, or typing it in from a magazine. And that is, you can write a program yourself. But to do that, we'll have to talk a little more about what a program really is. That's what we'll talk about here. You may recall that previously we looked at entering in direct commands into the computer. For example, I could say, print 33 plus 44, and the computer would reply, 77. That's called a direct command command, we could put exactly the same type of command into a program, in which case we would call it a statement, and it would be stored and used later, not used right away. So here's what we might do. In order to store a command, we put a number in front of it. I might put a number here, 100, and then behind it, the same command, print 33 plus 44. And when I press return, the computer, instead of performing the command, will store it away, and then we can use it at a later time. Command, we didn't print the answer now, the instruction is stored. Now, if you want to enter a program, you have to be careful, first of all, that any old programs you have in there are disposed of. You don't want them sitting around. You want to start with an absolutely fresh computer, so you say, wipe out the old programs by typing in the word new.